Hello you sexy beasts, welcome back to Blueprints. So, this episode is going to be a bit different from the others. Originally, I was going to compare the MiG-17 to its predecessor, the MiG-15bis, and find out which was better, and whether which accurate was better or worse. But as you can probably see by the title of this video, there are some issues that need addressing. Now, before you go into the comment section with your pitchforks and torches and scream RUSSIAN BIAS out the top of your lungs, calm down, watch the video to the end and form your own impressions before joining the horde. I am going to go out of my way and teach you how to fight this thing in each different aircraft. Of course I'm also going to teach the MiG-17 pilots how to fight you, so this makes the whole thing kind of redundant. Hey, but at least you can relish in the fact that no one probably watches video anyways. Alright, let's head into the stats. Let's cover the soft stats first. In a straight pull, I wasn't able to break my wings off in a turn whether or not I had boosters installed. However, the wings seem highly fragile when rolling whilst turning. Even stuck, if you roll and turn at the same time too hard above 900 to 950 km per hour in indicated airspeed, you stand a real chance to just snap your wings clean off. Stall speeds are identical to the MiG-15 business. With landing flaps, you'll stall out at around 180 km per hour IAS and 210 km per hour without. Your landing flaps will break at around 600 km per hour and your gear at around 450 km per hour. Basically, if you land in between 250 to 400 km per hour IAS, you should be fine. Now here's an interesting stat. Write it down because it will come in handy later. In a dive, even a slight one, the MiG-17 will lose its wings if you go over 1150 km per hour IAS. What's this interesting? Well, every other top tier jet, even the MiG-15 BIS can go up to 1200 km per hour relatively safely. However, I found that even without both wings you can still fly this thing in a straight line. You just can't turn it and are automatically bailed out as soon as you reach the map border. Armament is the same as with the MiG-15 BIS. One fast firing 37mm cannon carrying 40 rounds and two 23mm cannons carrying 160 rounds. For a combined burst mass of 10.80 kg per second. It can carry two 250 kg bombs under the wings, but honestly, who carries bombs on a jet fighter? Alright, soft stats done. So far, nothing OP has been spotted. Well, <laughs> let's head into the stats then. As expected, given that both aircraft are powered by the same engine, the MiG-17 and the MiG-15BIS share the top position for fastest climb rate of the runway. If you'd rather prefer to speed up and then climb, the sustained climb speed is about um, 750 to 800 km per hour IAS at a 10 green climb cursor angle. Fully acing both aircraft shares increased performance between them equally, as envisioned by the Communist Party. Uh, whoa, I I'm sorry about that, uh, I'll stop with the accents now. <laughs> Basically, you're always going to be the highest aircraft in the game. Except for maybe some experimental German or Japanese rocket aircraft. Nothing unexpected so far. What about top speed? We know this thing is supposed to be fast, but is it faster than a hunter? Yes and no. Stuck and at low altitudes, and by low I mean pretty much sea level, the MiG-17 is actually quite slow, slower than the F-2 Sabre even. That changes at around 3 to 4 km altitude, where even a stock MiG-17 is faster than an aced hunter. Yes, you heard that right. Naturally, you could come up with the obvious tactic of just flying as low as possible, right? Wrong. Because acing the MiG-17 combats even that problem. An ace MiG-17 is the fastest aircraft in the game at all altitudes. The thing even redlines in level of flight at 500 meters altitude. Not even a hunter can outrun it. And the farther up the battle takes place, the bigger the difference. Okay, this is bad news for hunter pilots. But we were kind of expecting it to be fast. Surely it can't turn to compensate, right? Right? Wrong! Look at these charts! Just look at them! I can't believe my eyes either, I had to redo the testing twice over! <sighs> If you just got very confused as to what's happening, basically the MiG-17 turns as fast or better than the MiG-15 BIS, which was already the best turning top tier jet in the game. And that doesn't change whether you're stuck, aced at low or high altitude. The funny thing is, the MiG-17 is stated to be about 300 kg heavier than the MiG-15 BIS and has a low wing loading. To summarize it for you, the MiG-17 has the best climb rate, is the fastest and is the best turning top tier jet in the game. The only thing that holds it back is the roll rate. 
which is also better than the MiG-15 bis, honestly abysmal rolling capability, but at least slower than most other jets. So what do we take from this all? Well, if you're the proud owner of a MiG-17, congratulations! If you're fighting against one, pay close attention to this next part. Now, how do you fight an opponent that is superior to you in almost every aspect? You exploit his weaknesses. In this case, the MiG-17 suffers from fragile wings whilst diving and rolling into a turn at high speeds and low acceleration past 800 km per hour. And yes, a stock MiG-17 turns slightly worse and has a lower top speed at sea level than your F2 and CL-13. However, you can't see whether or not your opponent is aced or not, and you should always treat them as if they were. Let's go over each aircraft then. The F2 has the advantages of higher roll rate, unbreakable wings as long as you don't have boosters installed and more accurate guns. Therefore, you should engage as follows. If you can, force a head-on, but roll away before you reach 1 km distance between you. Your guns are more accurate than his, and if you can take him out from afar, that's one less MiG to deal with. If that isn't an option, you can use your superior roll rate to do scissor rolls and force an engaging MiG-17 to overshoot you. If one is diving on you, turn into its dive and force it to roll to engage. If you're lucky, he'll break his wings trying to get guns on you. You can use these same tactics on the CL-13. Your aircraft is a bit more powerful and maneuverable than the F2, but you get worse guns, so keep that in mind when engaging in head-ons. You can also try your luck and dive to the deck when a MiG-17 is engaging you. You do have the higher dive speed, but keep in mind to not go over 1200 km/h or you'll break your own wings off. If you're flying a Hunter, I am sorry. Before the introduction of the MiG-17, your aircraft served as a perfect counter to the MiG-15 bis. Now, there's nothing going for you anymore. You do get a higher acceleration above 800 km/h, but he'll catch you eventually. You also can't turn or roll with them. Honestly, all you can try to do is get an altitude advantage and dive on them. You can also dive away from them or force a head-on with your beautiful Aiden cannons. Other than that, you're screwed. And finally, if you're flying the German MiG-15 bis, you're even worse off than the Hunter pilots. The MiG-17 is equal or outclasses you in every single category. You can try and draw out a turn fight whilst your teammates engage the MiG-17, but other than that, you're pretty much screwed as well. Now, I did promise the MiG-17 pilots that I will give them tactics too, but I feel kind of dirty doing so. But anyways, I'm a man of my word. You can pretty much do anything that you want. Honestly, the only precautions you have to take are to stay above uh, 3 to 4 km altitude in your stock aircraft and to not roll and turn at the same time when flying above 90 km per hour. Other than that, all the cards are in your hand. This was it for the statistical review of the MiG-17. Up next is some gameplay showing the potential of this aircraft. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button with your wingtip and subscribe if you're new around here. My name is Will Michaels Boom, and as always, thanks for watching. So, welcome to the second part of this video, which is applying our tactics in real battle. Now, we are here in a match between, uh, well, us and the Americans and the British. Now, a lot of venoms, a lot of, gr of uh, meteors, we are down tiered a little bit. There are some uh, Sabres F2 or F25s in this game, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I am pretty sure because, well, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> but anyway, so, little tip here. If you are faced against a group of enemies, always go after the last one in the line. If you go to f for the first one, okay, you might take him out, but uh, the others behind him will take you out as well. So, that's exactly what I did here. Diving on this Venom, trying to get close. Now, the thing about these guns is they have a rather low muzzle velocity, which I'm really not used to. I just can't aim with these guns whatsoever. And they have a low ammo. Now, do keep that low ammo effect in mind for later in this battle because it's going to be very, very important. Running out of ammo is actually what's going to kill me in this match. Now the F2 from, uh, from earlier that um, appeared on the side, he does have a higher acceleration than me at uh, speeds over 750 km per hour, but I had way, much, way more speed in him, so I had no trouble opening distance there. Just keep in a straight line, 
don't try to climb. You can climb, you can climb if you have the speed advantage because you also have the better climb rate than F2. But uh, just keep in a straight line, you should be able to draw to no problem. Now he did uh, pull off and I just put a split S into the air, store some energy in the bank in altitude and chase back after him. Now the F2 seems to be going after my teammate there and one thing I definitely like to do is if I have a choice between two targets and one is alone and one is chasing my teammate, I always go for the one that's chasing my teammate. Even if, well, your objective is just to get the, the most kills yourself, you, you would definitely not be badly employed by keeping your teammates alive. Now this hunter here, oh, this poor hunter, he had no chance. No chance whatsoever. One hit with a 37mm cannon, tail is off. He did have enough energy and, well, the hunter is very sluggish. He, he, he just didn't have the chance to even roll, roll out of that one. Now I was kind of lucky that he didn't hit me with those 30 mils uh, while spraying, whilst uh, going to the ground. That happened to me before. <laughs> I was actually the victim of one of those random shots that you usually see in the top 5 plays, uh, top 5 epic plays clips. And yeah, it was rage inducing, to say the least. Now again, Nionix, my teammate in the MiG-15 is being chased by even fires in the F9F. Now. You shouldn't have a problem pulling away from this F9F, but I'm not going to, to take any chances here. Now, I do use my air brakes because I do not want to exceed that safe speed and break my wings. That would be very, very embarrassing. Now, the pure presence of me does uh, force this F9F to, um, to pull away from my teammate. Now, this guy, this guy is going to prove some trouble because he's not, he's not going to make it easy to hit him. Look at this, he's perfectly, perfectly evading my shots and combined with me just absolutely sucking at shooting and not, not being able to aim the shots, yeah, I wasted way too many shots on this guy. Now, I hit him, his engine is smoking, his, his right flap is damaged, but he's still, still much more than able to fly. Now my teammate takes a shot at him, takes his left wingtip off, but he seems to be still pulling up. So I just put the last couple of shots in with the 23mm cannons and take him out. Now, the guy's going to um, complain in the chat that was a kill still, and actually, you guys tell me, tell me in the comment section if you think that was a kill still, uh, a kill still. I saved his ass, I crippled him first, and then I took him out when he was uh, pulling up. Was it a kill still? Was it not a kill still? You guys let me know. Now I was kind of at a low altitude and low speed, and I do want I do not want to head back into that furball. So I use the, the mixed climbing cap capability, go into 10 degree climb and get some energy, get some get some altitude and get some speed. I do keep a close eye on that furball over there because if an F2 catches me at this moment at low energy, he can more than easily take me out. But it seems like no one of them is going after me, they are all way too engaged in that uh, dogfight over there. So I turn around, I've got enough altitude, I've got enough speed, get some more speed in the bank and head back into the furball. Now the Santa is running away from one of my teammates, I try to get some shots at him but again I just suck at predicting the, the muzzle velocity of these guns. I, you definitely have to have to aim much farther than you think you have to. Now my teammate is going after the hunter, so I pull away from him and go after this Venom that is chasing my teammate. Teammate takes the, Venom, takes the hunter out in the meantime, Venom goes into head-on, does not get his guns on me. Now the Venom does very good here, he does turn into me, but he does not try to engage me. Which was lucky, I could have run him out easily, but uh, that was a short window where he could have shot me. Luckily he does turn away and uh, proceeds to chase after my teammate in the MiG-15. Critical teams list, I have two kills. My team has taken them apart one by one. The enemy team is running out of aircraft. But this is all very shortly going to end. Uh, actually I have no idea what's happening to my team, but they are just falling apart one by one now. Venom takes out my teammate in the MiG-15. Our MiG-15 is chasing another Venom, but these two guys here, this Mohawk and this Graf guy, they are absolutely amazing. Kudos to these pilots, especially this graph guy. You're going to see him later. Now, I am down to my 37mm cannon and while I do have still plenty of shots left, I cannot spam them. 
I probably should have um, way just managed my ammo a bit better, but it did not happen. Now, a couple of minutes back when I was climbing, I did have the choice between uh, going back into the fight or going for landing and rearming. That's the thing I'm about to make. You don't get much ammo, so if you get the chance, you should definitely, definitely rearm. Now, my teammate is still engaging that Venom over there, and since he's engaged that Venom, I dive after the one that's behind him, the Mohawk 79 and the other Venom. But both of these pilots are good, they have good, um, good awareness. Turns into me, I do not want to risk uh, turning and rolling into him, because that will snap my wings off, so I keep on going uh, forwards. Grafferdoy over there comes back, take a shot at him, nothing happens. Now do I have plenty of energy over here, and Nionix is, uh, is again going after that first Venom. So I turn around, do not engage that one, go into roll and engage Graf that is behind him. You'd be surprised how maneuverable this thing actually is. Despite the roll rate being kind of bad, you still get, um, get plenty of turning speed. Honestly, this is one of the, of the best turning jets in the game. That combined with the, with the good energy retention, the awesome top speed and the good uh, acceleration just makes this aircraft absolutely amazing to fly. Oh, look at that, that's the F2 from earlier. He finally decided to come back now. Ooh, this was good. That graph guy, he, he got behind me, got under my tail whilst I was uh, redding out and he almost got me there, but I just have way too much speed. The Venom could have never catch me. Now, my teammate in the, in the MiG-15 goes after that F2, whilst the Venom stay in a group over here. I gotta say, I don't know if they were on team or if they are friends, but they are definitely, definitely playing together very, very well. They lured us over the airfields, we have to pay attention not to get too close or get shot down by AA. Mohawk again, I tried to shoot him, but he's just evading me perfectly, and I do not have enough ammo left. Seven shots left. And another shot wasted. At this point I was just getting kind of nervous. I was just looking at my ammo counter and not making my shots count. But I want you to notice this. The Venom is a very maneuverable aircraft. It's one of the best turning aircraft in the game. Well, at least in the, in the jet here. And the MiG-17 doesn't seem to have any problem keeping up with it. I just have to, to use my air brakes sometimes uh, when he's using his air brakes and try to, get, uh, try to get behind me. But other than that, I have no problem following this guy. Okay, given the roll rate kind of screws me up here, but I just use air brakes, go above and go out. Now, that was an awesome maneuver. He evaded my shot and he got right behind me, within 300 meters. Now, the MiG-17 does have the better acceleration and the better top speed, so I evade his shots, which he didn't even shoot. I don't know if he has ammo left, if he doesn't, but um, I have no problem opening the distance here. He turns away. Get into split ass, get some altitude, and engage back on him. Now at this point, disaster strikes. <laughs> we have lost a teammate, we are now down to two players, myself and uh, the load guy, and we are both very, very low on ammo. Now once the F2 chases after my teammate, I occupy these two Venoms. But the MiG-15 is going to get catched by that F2 eventually. So. What I try to do is save my teammate. Now, I only have one shot left and there are three enemy aircraft in the air. But, what I can do is uh, distract that F-86 F-2. Even if I don't have ammo left, I can always just uh, use my smoke and uh, pretend to be shooting at him. That should uh, at least um, try and get him away from my teammate. Now, the tactic I'm trying to form here is uh, that I'm going to, to pl basically play bait and uh, try to engage all three enemy aircraft at the same time, giving my teammate the time to land, to rearm, to reload and get back into the air so that he can support me and so that I can land. Because we are both out of ammo. I only have one shot left, he has nothing else. But for that he has to survive first, so I go after his F-86, F-2, he's seen me and disaster strikes, a lucky shot into my engine. That was actually a bad play on my part. The F2 has the advantage over the MiG-17 in a head-on. Especially if your MiG-17 doesn't even have ammo. So it gets a shot into, into my engine and that is what's going to ultimately kill me. 
Getting shot into your engine is um, a death sentence in jet battles. Basically what's going to happen now is over time my engine is going to lose more and more performance and I'm just going to not be able to even catch F86 or outrun the Venoms. Now we are both kind of screwed here, we are both trying to run away towards our airfield, try to get our AA to help, to help us out, but the F-86 is eventually going to take out the, the MiG-15, so what I will try to do is be very hundred bro, sacrifice myself and chase after the, MiG, uh, after the F-86 F-2. Venom goes after me as well, evade them both, but sadly that F-86 pilot was smarter than that. He did not turn around to engage me, he went straight after my after my teammate and now I have no chance of catching him. That is actually the death of my teammate. F-86 is going to catch up to him and kill him. And due to my damage Ant and I can now not outrun this Venom either. So I can I can't I can't uh, catch an F-86 and I can't outrun the Venom either. I'm all out of options here. Now the only thing I can do is, since I still have one shot left, I can try to lure this Venom into a false sense of security. Turn around, evade his fire at uh, sub 700 meters, get behind him, get the air brakes out and now I am behind this Venom. This is a good position to be in, but sadly I have to make my shot count. I only have one shell left. If I miss, I am done and dead. F-86 takes out my teammate, I am now the last player alive on the team. It's me alone versus three enemy aircraft. Two Venoms and that F-2. And if he is going, is going to take some time to get back here and I don't know where the other, where the other Venom went. I think he went for, for the airfield. But nonetheless, I'm now hard on the tail of this guy. But Okay, so here's the thing. I could have taken the shot there but I'm trying to lure him into a false sense of security. By chasing him and not shooting, Hopefully he will think that I don't have ammo left. And now I do, I do actually do a, a dirty tactic here and uh, write in all chat that, that I do not have ammo. And technically it is true. I don't have ammo for the 23mm cannons. I still have one shot left for the 37mm. Now hopefully this is going to cause this guy to play a bit more relaxed. Don't know if false attack here but... Uh, the F-86 F2 is just about to come in. He takes some, some shots at me, makes me panic, I dunk that shot and I, oh, I'm, I'm out. This game is over. My engine is dying, I am alone versus these two aircraft, I have no ammo left. I'm thinking about being honorable and uh, crashing into this guy but he's been such an amazing player, I really don't, don't want to disappoint him like that because he, he has really played very, very well. I gotta say, this guy is an awesome Venom pilot. Graf, if you're seeing this video, congratulations mate, you definitely deserved that win. So I do what a gentleman does, I fly in a straight line and basically invite them to kill me. Whoever gets me first is going to get the score. Now, <laughs> the F2 is actually going to, to try and dive into me, uh, getting the kill, the skill stealing the kill from Graf, but he just fails completely. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I thought I had a bad aim, but that guy just, just missed a MiG-17 in a straight line. <laughs> Now I take my engine to zero throttle, put the air brakes on so that the Venom can catch me. He engages just smoke, takes a shot at me and he takes me out. Good game. And my pilot has lost his leg. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like uh, rating and if you're new around here, subscribe. My name is Ben Michael Boom, and as always, thanks for watching.